What's going on guys? All right, so what is up? We're going to wrap the front bumper on the Audi A4 S line, all right? Car's white, so I removed pretty much everything I could off the front bumper because when you're wrapping a white car, you gotta make sure that you're very thorough, all right? So that's going the extra, extra mile when it comes to wrapping into deeper recesses and things like that. I wanna wrap into the grill and behind the grill as far as I possibly can go. It doesn't just kinda cut it to cut along an edge and then tuck in. So this is how we're doing it. I have an inlay on the bottom section here. Again, the grill goes in here. Uh, there was this minor accident or something. It, it cracked right here on this lower section here. So no big deal, it's holding on fine. Uh, otherwise, just regular scuffs and scrapes and stuff like that that are pretty normal for wear and tear. Now I'm gonna do this piece, this bumper in one piece. Now in the beginning I was talking about doing it in two pieces, or sorry, multiple pieces with inlays right here possibly. I'm gonna actually show you a different technique uh, about what I use normally when it comes to doing this type of stuff and how to lay into a recess, all right? And then, and then deal with the vinyl we stretch out from the recess afterwards. So we're gonna lay into this area mostly and then we're gonna, use, we're gonna troubleshoot all our wrinkles and things like that afterwards. Uh, well, so what I've done here is I've prepped the surface using 70% isopropyl alcohol, no more, no less. I have uh, also used a compressor to blow away any contaminants, any debris that might be kicking around in the grill, along here, all over here. Um, again, I don't want to bang anything, so I don't want to disturb anything. I just blew away anything that might have been loose. Uh, I was pretty thorough with that. And that's it. So everything's prepped, everything's ready to go. I have my piece of vinyl cut, so I'm just going to grab it. Today we're using Avery Denison uh, Brilliant Blue Metallic. Gorgeous color. You'll be able to see the car soon enough, don't worry. And that's it. So I'm going to grab my piece. Perfect. So the side markers do not come out of this car. They're plastic welded in. I don't have a plastic welder to weld them back, so I don't take them out. It's fine, we can work around them. Uh, that's the only part that's somewhat a little bit touchy when it comes to being a little bit more careful. But otherwise, we should be fine. So my piece is gonna be much longer than the recommended amount that I, sorry, the amount that I need for the front bumper because I've cut it from the rear bumper, the rear bumper being the longest. Both our bumpers being shorter than 30 inches tall. So we can get two, two bumpers out of one sheep essentially, right? I cut one length on the rear bumper, which was 115 inches from end to end. And then I take that piece, I fold it in half or just measure 30 inches and cut it 30 inches all the way down. And that gives me two bumpers out of one sheet. Yeah, that can be done on most cars, but not all cars. So keep in mind, if you have like a Dodge Charger or a Challenger, you're gonna need extra because those bumpers are much taller than 30 inches. All right. So I'm gonna cut off of the excess to store it in the car for now. Uh, otherwise, yes, as usual, you can grab anything you want in the description below. I'll post the tools and uh, the vinyl that I'm using today in the description below. You guys will be pretty happy with this collar once it's all done. I'm pretty sure the customer's gonna love it. So I have a lot more videos coming, don't worry. I mean, depending on when I post this. So we're gonna roll the backing paper off very gently. Again, I don't want to disturb anything too much, so, because it's, it's so open right now. So the thing is, is that if we don't remove this, this type of stuff, what happens is, is dirt and debris starts to fall out of the grill and fog light areas, like fog light bezels and things like that. So you want to, you really want to take them off, all right? So the front, the middle of this bumper is super simple because there isn't much there, right? Once you remove the grill, there's literally, there's literally nothing left of the front bumper. So these bumpers are typically pretty easy. This one's not as easy as some of the other uh, models prior to this one. So this one's a bit more challenging since we do have that recess right there. Uh, and then we have that extra lower lip on the bottom. All right, so right now we're just gonna glass this bad boy out and I'm not gonna kill it, all right? So I'm just gonna glass it out slightly. Uh, make sure I got my magnets on the other side there. I do not, so always double checking. I always stick a magnet down on one end just to make sure. And then we're just gonna gently reposition this and I'm gonna pull it towards me because I want it to flex, all right? See how it's flexing? Perfect, it's what I want. So I'm gonna lift this up a little bit with one hand. And 
I'm going to pull a little bit more. I can pretty much install this bumper without any heat. This is how easy Avery is. But, you know, the fact that it is Avery, it's still, it can run into issues with uh, stone chipping and things like that over time. It will show. So I'm just going to start right about here. And I'm going to anchor this off, basically. So, I'm going to run my finger along this body line. And I'm not going to go too far just yet because I've got to glass out the other side a little bit more. And then we can start working on it. Just get that off. All right. So again, I don't need to kill it. We're just kind of contouring the film. It's probably good enough. Anchor this section. So you're going to see how I'm going to do this. It's going to be very interesting to you guys. Something maybe a little bit new uh, from what I pre from what I normally do. I got to get that wrinkle out there. So we don't want to have any wrinkles on any hard body lines. It's going to make it more difficult to work work them out afterwards. So I'm actually going to fix this up a little bit right here. I need to spread the vinyl apart a little bit more, okay? There we go. So all that was is I just added a bit more tension to the film. Pulling it towards the back of the car. Cool. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to lock this in on the top. See now, because I have the grill out of the way, I can actually work, and we don't have a piece in the middle here to wrap, I can actually work the vinyl back in that direction, which is super cool actually. So, so for example, if I have a lot of bunched up film on the top here, I can actually come back this way, which is actually even better because now I'm not even stretching the vinyl at all. I'm just gonna lock that in, cool. Cool. All right, so we're gonna fix up the bottom here slightly. Now, again, this lower section right here is wrapped. This one is not. So there is a recess right here. I'm gonna to have to lay into that. It's a very tight recess. And let's get to the fun stuff right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, what I want to do is, I wanna lift the vinyl up and lay it in as far as I possibly can from the bottom. So I'm going to start pushing vinyl in from the bottom. Just getting locked this in a bit here. Cool. Go right here, watch. So as I pull across like this, look, I can actually fold the vinyl in. Now we're not we're not bridging that recess as hard as we normally would have. Any wrinkles that I get during this process, we can use a heat gun to heat out and then pull everything out afterwards. So this technique I learned on my own car because my car has a really heavy recess right here and it tends to lift if you just stretch the vinyl in there. 3M, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, Avery, it'll all lift because it's such a deep recess that if you stretch the vinyl in like this one, it'll just fail. It's going to want to pull out. So it's getting, it's getting messy down here, right? That's, that's totally fine. So again, I'm lifting here and look, I'm pushing, this is just slack. I'm just literally pushing slack into this recess. It's causing a mess, of course, but it's not a big deal. As long as you can, as long as you're confident in troubleshooting, you'll be fine. So this would be a more advanced um, definitely a way more advanced technique of installing. If you don't want to do this, you can put an inlay in here. I'd probably actually try an inlay on the top section here. 
I was thinking about it at first, I'm like, you know what, I don't have to do an inlay on this piece, so let's not. And completely laying in to this really heavy angle right there. Okay, so now, of course, look at this disaster, okay? <laughs> it's totally fine, though. Let's see. So I'm going to start glassing a bit, smoothing this out. How's this going to look afterwards? You're going to see, okay? As long as we don't overstretch the film, we're not going to cause any damage to the film. As long as we don't overstretch the film, we're not going to cause any damage to the film. We're going to be totally fine. So see how I'm pushing in, trying to keep it flat at the same time? So that's an important trick right there. Okay, so look, we're getting jammed up right here. That's totally fine. I'm not worried about it. I knew it was going to happen. So all this right here, now I have this little recess, I can just lay in, okay? So I'm just gonna lift up from the bottom and pop it up and then lay in, lay into this recess right here. Very important. If we don't lay into this recess, for sure you're gonna have air bubbles in here. Second of all, they're gonna start to break as stones hit them and then it's gonna expose white of the, the white color of the car, right? So we don't want that. So again, all done one piece, tension free in here, guys. A little bit of tension on the top, not much. This is more rounded on the top here, so that part I'm not concerned about. Let's finish this side up and then we'll move on to the other side. This bumper is really not gonna take that long. It's the rear one, taking the rear one off is a bit more of a tedious job. So if we get if our vinyl gets like really kinked up and you know kind of jacked up a bit with wrinkles and stuff, all we gotta do and it starts getting marks in, all we gotta do is heat it a little bit, all right? So what I'm gonna do here is just bring this across a little bit and we're gonna tighten it up, see? I'm just gonna tighten that up, tighten that bad boy up. So this makes this particularly good right here because now it's all laid into this recess here. So yes, I'm running into an issue here, right? We're going to deal with this in a minute. I have plenty of vinyl to wrap underneath, so I'm not even, not even at all concerned about that. So now right here, I'm going to pull the vinyl back to here. I have to pull it past this point right here where, it start, where it's bunching up. Oh, that's awesome. So I only have the bumper clipped in, just so you know. And that's a downside to what can happen. It's no big deal. So we gotta be careful when we're doing that. All right, so now we're gonna heat it. I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it do its thing, let it move, whatever it needs to do. And then we're just gonna take the vinyl and we need to make it taut across the face of this fog light area. So this whole area has to be tight. Cool? That's exactly what you want. I do this, um, you know, I do this with Vivid or, you know, my own film. This is the Midnight Sun. I did it with, did it with Midnight Sun. Uh, even with thicker films, it works. It's not like it doesn't work. So anyone's like, oh yeah, you can only do that with Avery or whatever. Nah. You can do this with any film you want to do this with. It's really not um, much more difficult with a thicker film. Of course, Avery is always easier to use. Trying to lay into this little, there's a tight recess right here, so I want to lay into that. And then again, we're stretching out. So as long as I'm stretching, the whole, the whole idea of this is that I'm actually drawing tension across here, okay? I'm not having, I'm not stretching the vinyl into here. I'm laying the vinyl into here and then stretching out from here across here. This is not going to pull back in together unless I have a lot of tension on my edges. Then that's different. But again, we, we wrap without adding tension to our edges. Wait till you see um, the Ford Raptor I got coming in and how I tackled the front fender on that one piece. Justin Pate said it couldn't be done in one piece. I uh, will show you how with no failure.
So I should be using a wrap glove. I'm not. I got a wrinkle. Let's just fix it. Should be using a wrap glove or my squeegee, one of the two. I'll just take my time. I don't have my wrap glove on me right now. So you have to, you don't have to, but to wrap this bumper with the headlights in is gonna be way more difficult than wrapping it with the headlights out. Not all are like that. Usually you can wrap a bumper without taking out the headlights. This one I showed in the initial video why it was difficult, all right? In the initial walk around video of this car. It's because of this little section right here where the headlight actually sticks past this point. It's an interesting bumper. Either way, it looks nice, so that's all that matters. Right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sh make sure I don't have any tension right across that side marker because I don't want to have any tension across that side marker because when I cut it, it might shrink. And that would be bad. Okay, so no tension. Let's just keep it where it was at. Because the cut on the side marker area is gonna be so precise, it's gonna be a little bit difficult um, in that area. It's, it's gonna be, sorry, it's gonna be susceptible to failure, all right? So I have to lift it near the ends here as we're getting closer because it's starting to lock in air. Get underneath. Do all this. Now, I'm gonna take care of all that in a minute. What I wanna do first is uh, get this section done. And get the other side going. Do this section right here. I know I know this end right here. It's cool. I can cut a hole. Okay. So I'm just having a peek. tackle this because I don't want to I don't want the vinyl to start setting and a glue line happen there'll always be some very small ones but the longer you leave it the, the worse it'll get okay That's a relief cut. <clears throat> There's 
the edge. Another relief cover here. Right there. So one thing I wanted to show you was that the paint is kind of flaking away <coughs> on the inside where the right in here. I'll show you after. Yeah, you can do that, it's cool. We're gonna wash the car right now, so it's gonna be a little bit loud for a little bit. So we're fully covered in here. I just have this last corner over here to work out. And here, let's do this. Let's get this off of here. So the only reason why it has wrinkles right now is because it's running, it's being pulled across that way. Just fine. There we go. Down right here, I'm gonna do a cut and fold. So that means I'm gonna cut a straight line and fold the pieces over and then trim away any excess. Just trying to assess this situation here, it's a bit tighter. So I'm just working a little bit at a time, making sure that I'm not overstretching the film. That's perfect, I'll have coverage. It's a little tight in certain areas like that, so you gotta be careful, take your time. Perfect. Let's cut out the rest. saying with the paint flaking away uh, a couple one thing we have to be careful of obviously the paint doesn't get under the wrap that, could, that would be a problem uh, second of all the, the manufacturer it's, it's OEM it's just the manufacturer doesn't spray very heavy this car has not actually been in an accident the front rubber has not been repainted I know that um, it's just they don't spray really well in areas like this and it's really choppy so not much you can do about that but again what, what my point about that is that you don't have to be so, so careful uh, when you're cutting. Just, just you know, be careful, but don't, you don't have to lay in knifeless tape in an area like this. Just so you know. So that side's done. Other than the trimming. Let's get on to the other side where we had 23 minutes. Okay, so same deal. Maybe you get a better view this way, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's try and get the camera in a better angle for you here, okay? Let's get you zoomed in a bit. There. All right. So again, we wanna make sure we don't have anything on our hands, that kind of stuff, like, because we're putting our hands behind the film, so. Having dirt and stuff on your hands is a big no-no. Since we noticed the vinyl's pulling itself around the bottom, that would be wonderful if I could just cut it and be done with it and lay it down. But again, unfortunately, it's not how it's gonna work. So we're going to lift the vinyl up. And you look, you can see right here, I'm creating a ton of slack right here. And I'm just gonna feed all that in there. That's how that works. Now I'm gonna get wrinkles, so I'm gonna go back and we're gonna fix out all those wrinkles. So it only makes sense, we're changing we're changing the direction of the vinyl completely. Gotta lift 
lift that up. There we go. There, that's better. So now, oh, look, all this can be pulled out, okay? Don't even worry about this. Uh, Avery's a bit more tricky when it comes to pulling it apart and stuff because it does like, it does love to stick to it. It, lo it loves to stick to itself. Um, but again, it's not like it can't be done. So this is where I start using my squeegee. You can see as I'm, as I'm pushing down, it's pulling the vinyl in. That's the key. So I have a little bit of oil in my hands, like this natural from this natural grease from my whatever. As long as your hands aren't sweating, like you just had a bucket of KFC, or you know, greasy like that, then you're fine. You're not gonna, you're not gonna compromise the integrity of the film. Take it and stretch it out without pulling it out. Okay, I still got a little air in there, so I'm going to go back in right here. This section. Okay. You don't have to heat it a lot. We just got to soften it a bit. Is this high risk, you might ask? Yes, of course it's high risk. Um, you could you could get a lot of debris underneath your wrap. Will it fail? Hell no. Not if you did it right. That's what makes it special. So I gotta hold that down there and deal with this section over here. Just like the other side. Well, again, I'm going to take this. I'm going to warm it up, and we're going to draw it across. Okay. I actually took my stretch mostly from this area. So now that we're getting here again, this is where we're going to kind of. Take a pause, pull the vinyl back, and then re-gloss all this out up to about here. Since I didn't squeegee all this yet, we're gonna pull it back to about this far. I just don't wanna pull it back past here, okay? Good. Gotta get that out. That didn't turn out good right there. There we go. I'm gonna shrink that down again. Okay, all this. Must have been 30 minutes because the camera cut out. All right. This would be, actually wouldn't be that bad in Chrome. 
Um, I would just do man, just do inlays instead. Whenever I look at a bumper, I always look at it and be like, can I wrap this thing in chrome? How would I do it? Okay. Let's lay in a bit more here. Okay. I wanted a straighter line. talking about this area right here you know if this is how is this how the pros do it you might be asking yourself I mean I don't know this is how I do it so my pro I don't know but I just wrap cars I just feel like I, I look at vinyl a bit differently than some people and see it a bit differently differently so I try to teach you guys how I see it I'm just going to draw this across the bottom, bring it out to the corner, hand over top. This allows me to disperse the tension nice and evenly and spread the vinyl out if you put my hands over it, if I put my hands over top. It's much, much easier that way and more reliable. Cool. All right. So, bumper's wrapped. We're going to finish up all the details. So those of you wondering how this was done, that's how we do it. Other than that lower lip section, we got one piece, no unnecessary seams. So you might have also noticed that I removed the, the sensors. It's way better that way. I'll wrap the sensors individually. Uh, so if you're curious about how, like, how you cut out the sensors or whatever, I just, I'll cut them out like this. Oh, everyone's gone, it's nice and quiet, love it. All right, I'm gonna come in on the low side here. find the corner right there. We're going to do a relief cut down. Perfect. That's going to allow the top to start folding in. Again, I'm going to start looking for it over here. Somewhere in there. Perfect. If you're concerned about your areas like where you're stretching, you can just go in and post seat afterwards if you're really worried about it. I'm not worried about mine. But when you're newer at it, you might be a little bit concerned. Alright. Now we're going to go down here. Let's find that spot. Right in there. I'm just going to take it and roll it around, okay? So, I put like a splice in the vinyl, right? And that means that if I roll it around, 
I put it kind of ahead. And when I roll it around, it's going to start to separate a little bit as it gets to the edge. But it's only going to split as much as it needs to. It's kind of like another trick that I have. So let me explain that in uh, English for you. So down here, I put, I put a little slit. So I, I found the edge of my thumb. I, I, put, I started my blade at the very edge here, and I put a slit going out. So then when I push the vinyl around this way, the, the slit actually starts to spread, and it allows the vinyl to actually conform and go around that corner pretty much exactly as it needs to. Um, the, vi the vinyl will keep splitting until it gets around and, and eventually it stops, you stop stretching it. But it'll only split as much as it needs to. So if you actually cut a little bit lower, that wouldn't be good, right? So you'd end up um, maybe cutting too much and having too much of a slit. So I always go a little bit higher. That way I'm more certain. I have better certainty that it's going to go right around the edge really nicely. Make your cuts as nice and even as possible. Um, when you're working in an area like this, this is a good time to practice. So I don't know if you guys can see in there, but there's like there's all kinds of paint flaking and stuff. I'm glad I didn't get under the wrap. I tried to loosen it all up and blow it all out with the compressor before, so it seems to have done the trick. There's little tabs there also. All right. And I just got the top section here ready to cut. Trim up the bottom, trim up the top, trim up the grill, and we're done. And I gotta lay into this recess down here still. If you happen to come short on the bottom of your bumper, it's not the end of the world. You can use an inlay. Afterwards, it's not that big of a deal because the edge is really gonna be hidden. Um, water and stuff shouldn't do anything to it as long as it's very tension free. Uh, you can also use seam tape on it to hold it down a little bit. Uh, seam tape has other names also. I don't, I'm not sure what the other, other people call it, but I call it seam tape. Unfortunately, Amazon doesn't sell it. I'm just going in deep right here. I'll post heat the bottom um, just to make sure everything's good, solid. The bottom of the bumpers are iffy sometimes because paint is usually not good down here either. So I like to, and that's not that's not necessarily the manufacturer's fault. It's just stones hitting it and stuff all the time. So it takes it takes a beating. All right, let's do. Where's my blade? There it is. Yeah, for time. Nine minutes into this one, not bad. So now right here, again, as I was showing you before, I lift up, I'm gonna lay in this beautiful recess that Audi put on the front bumper just to make wrapping a lot more difficult. It's a fun one. It's not a big deal, actually. Oh, that looks 
looks tight. Solid. All right. When I take the bumper off, I'm going to finish up this bottom side here. So I'll actually just trim this. I'm not going to show that in the video just because I'm going to take the bumper off to do that. But I will trim out the rest of the grill and stuff like that so you can see. Uh, actually, I'm just going to trim the grill on top of the headlights and then the edges and the bottom I'm going to trim on the bumper stand. It's just easier that way. So we can just literally come through here pretty carelessly, but just don't, don't be too careless. Right, this is where I'm going to start using a glove. So, I had it. What did I do with it? It's on the roof. flex the bumper out a little bit since it's super pliable in this in this state that it's in you can see how flexible that is right so right here I'm gonna do a relief cut and split those two up I had a wrinkle down there I thought I had to pull it back that would have been a bummer So again, having the grill out, look how far in I can wrap, right? This makes, this makes like a world of difference. So, cause sometimes you can see through the grill, you can see white and stuff. You know, there's only so much I can cover, obviously. I'm not gonna wrap all the little tabs and stuff like that, but it's still gonna make a noticeable difference in the quality of the wrap, in the finished product in the end. So again, so when I, when I was talking about that little slit on that side. So what I do, I can show you it over here actually. I'll move the camera for you. So what I do, I'm gonna focus it in. Right there. So right here, what I do in those corners is that I'll put my finger here so I found the edge and then I can go like that and then I can actually push the vinyl around, right? So the vinyl will continue to keep splitting. That's not a big deal. But I will, I will get it around as long as I know where the edge is with my finger, right? So that's what I use my finger for. I use it to mark the edge of where I need to wrap. So Sign Maker Tools threw me this glove the other day. It's a pretty solid glove. I like it a lot, actually. I said, you know what, I'm gonna use it and we're gonna put it through some abuse. Vivid ones I use a lot and they, they definitely uh, take a beating and they serve their purpose. But this one is meant to last substantially longer from my understanding. Cool, so let's do this. Like I said, there's only so far and I can go. I'm not gonna wrap every single little tab. So the headlight's gonna cover all this because they jut out, they stick out 
pretty much gonna wrap it up in a second and finish the rest off the car that's pretty much it guys so I'm gonna spend about another 10 minutes trimming it up and I'll even just kind of clean this up a little bit for you so you can see what things are going to look like. But yes, yeah, so I'll spend another 10 minutes or so cleaning it up, uh, doing all the trimming and stuff like that, and then uh, I'll slap on the grill, fog light bezels, all that fun stuff. And uh, you guys wait to see the finished product. Alright, so if you're interested in seeing the finished product, I'm going to end this video. Sorry, not end the video. I'm just going to end this part and cut to the scene of the finished bumper, okay? Voila, front bumper is done. All right, so what do we learn? Actually, I took the liberty of installing the headlights and just putting everything back together. I do have to actually wrap the sensors and uh, that little tow hook cover right there. Otherwise, they're done, it's done. Um, I took the liberty of wrapping that fender, installing the headlights and just putting everything back together in the meantime. Guys, I hope this video was informative when it comes to uh, wrapping a front bumper on this car, for example. A uh, little trick here, laying into the recess as opposed to stretching into the recess. Very minimal tension in that area, probably like 10% if that. So that's, that's very acceptable. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, otherwise, yes, it came out great. I think it looks awesome. Uh, yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I know it was a little bit long. Uh, and if you guys want to see some more videos, don't forget that subscribe button and notifications. Thank you for watching. Take care.